Hello everyone, my name is Kyle. I'm a fourth year electrical engineering student from the University of British Columbia and today we're going to be learning how to track objects using OpenCV libraries. After completing this tutorial, you'll have the basic tools needed for tracking objects in real time. You'll then be able to utilize them in more advanced applications such as robot vision like in this video shown here. So what are you going to need for this tutorial? First off, you're going to need to install OpenCV on your computer, you're also going to need some basic C++ knowledge. If you haven't installed OpenCV on your computer, you can visit my tutorial on installing it. I recommend you do that first before returning to this tutorial. The goal of this tutorial isn't to make a super robust system where you can identify any object at any time in any scene. What I'm going to be showing you how to do is the, the very first step in learning how to track objects using computer vision. And what I mean by that is we're going to be taking kind of the quick and dirty approach to this. And uh, we're, we're going to be following just kind of a two-step process. First, we're going to filter out the colors that we're interested in, which involves a couple steps, which we're going to be covering shortly, as well as uh, finding the contours in the filtered image, which uh, involves a few steps that we're also going to cover shortly after the color filtering. Now, this is very much an interactive lesson today. So I'm going to have to ask you to pause the video and download the source file from the link below so we can follow along together and tackle this problem. We're going to open up Visual Studio 2010. We're going to create a new project. It's going to be a Win32 console application. I'm going to name it Object Tracking, just like the source file. And we're going to click Next, Console Application, click on Empty Project. Click finish. I'm going to go over to Solution Explorer and you're going to right click on source files. We're going to add the source file that you downloaded. Uh, when I'm saved to my desktop, just navigate to wherever you saved your source file. Double click. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the property manager. Click right here. And we're going to uh, go to the debug and we're going to add an existing property sheet. So I saved mine in my main projects folder so that all my projects I can just go back a couple directories and just select it. Uh, it's, mine's called OpenCV Debug 243. I'm double click on that and that just links all the libraries so that we can use these two right here for our application today. So now's a good time to go back and start looking over the steps that we're about to follow to achieve this object tracking. Um, the first step that we're going to be doing is we're going to convert the image from the VGR color space to HSV color space. Colored objects are easier to filter in the HSV color space, and uh, there are many reasons for this, but I, st I strongly encourage you to check out the Wikipedia page on the HSV color space for more information on why it's used in uh, image processing applications. You can see what I'm talking about here. On the right is the HSV image and on the left is the RGB. You can see that in the HSV image some of the colors on the on the page are glowing quite brightly and you can see that that would be much easier to filter in the, your application. So, uh, you can go ahead and try for yourself. To go, go ahead and build the project. And, uh, on your left you should see a HSV color space photo and on the right a VGR. You can uh, find an object and hold it up. You can see uh, one. that your object will most likely glow. Now that we've converted to the HSV color space, we can take this image and we can filter out the pixels between a minimum and maximum value of their HSV values. Right, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to build the project again and rearrange a few things here. And I made a set of sliders here which you can use to adjust the minimum and maximum HSV values. So we're, we're going we're gonna to filter out the color orange here and I'm going to show you how. Now the name of the game here is to keep the color orange white in the binary image on the bottom left. And just by trial and error you can start dragging the slider bars and if you, if you drag it too far the, the orange will turn black. I just need to adjust the V values a little bit and we should have... A filtered orange square. Now in the binary image the white pixels are denoted as a 1 and the black pixels as a 0 so we can now search through the binary image look for the 1's and we'll know that that set of pixels is the area that we're looking for. 
So I'm going to do it again. So reset the HSV minimum and maximum values. And we're going to try and filter out the green square this time. So same kind of procedure. Just start dragging in the minimum and maximum values. And just be sure to keep the green square white. And there we have it. Now we've filtered out the green square as well. And just in case you're wondering, it also works for the blue square, no problem. So go ahead and try it for yourself. And be sure to get good at it because this is an important step when you're trying to uh, track objects by their color. Alright, it's time to go through some of the code that we've uh, written so far. So I've defined the minimum and maximum HSV values here. Uh, those are the values that we've been manipulating in the sliders. Now to um, make the sliders, or I call them track bars, uh, we've just defined in the create track bar function the uh, value that we're going to be manipulating. So as soon as we uh, slide this slider, the uh, h min value is going to uh, going to change. So if we go down to main, we can see that we define some matrices to hold our images. We've uh, defined a video capture object, and we've opened uh, the uh, webcam at position zero. We've then started a loop where uh, each each uh, iteration, we're going to read uh, the frame from the camera feed. We're then, then going to convert the color to HSV. Now I talked about that earlier. Then we're going to take this HSV image, and we're going to filter it between uh, minimum and maximum, which are the values that we've been controlling by the slider bars. Now some of you may have noticed that there was still some noise left in your image, such that your uh, your color couldn't be filtered out 100%. Now there is a way to fix this. We're going to have to apply what's called some morphological operations, and I'm going to go over these in the next section. Now OpenCV implements its morphological operations by uh, its dilate and erode functions. What the erode function does, it, uh, <clears throat> if there's any white space, such as your, as your noise, those little white specks that you might be seeing, it's going to erode into them. So it's, it's going to make them smaller, or maybe even non-existent. And what the dilate function is, it's going to take the remaining white space that we have, and we might have not that much because we've eroded into the object that we want to track as well. It'll take that uh, small amount of white space, and it's going to dilate it. It's going to make it much larger so that we can... Uh, have a nice definitive object that we're tracking. I'm going to show you a visual representation of what I'm talking about here. This is our original image. It's still got the noise around the outside of the orange pen that I'm holding up. <clears throat> and uh, to the right of it is uh, what it looks like after being eroded. Now, as you can see, all the white specks that used to be around it are now are now missing. So this is great. We we filtered out the the noise that uh that we've been disrupting our object tracking algorithm, and uh, we're left with a nice little image. Uh, it's kind of missing a little bit of uh, pixels in the middle. So how we're gonna fix that is we're going to now dilate the image, seen on the right here. And as you can see, the remaining white space from the eroded image is now dilated so large that we have a nice definitive object which we're tracking. You might see a, a few little specks here and there in the dilated image, and we can easily get rid of those just by uh, thresholding uh, between a minimum and maximum area. You can go and try for yourself. If you go back to main, and we're going to change this Boolean use morph ops, we're going to change it to true. And then scroll down here, we're going to see its usage uh, right here. It's going to if it's true, it's going to call uh, a locally made morph ops function that I made. Now let's go check out this morph ops function. You can see that I've defined a erode element. Uh, it's a rectangle 3 pixels by 3 pixels wide, and also a, a dilate element, which is 8 pixels by 8 pixels wide. Uh, they're both rectangles. Using rectangular structuring elements is much less uh, computationally intensive. You can see that first I call the erode function a couple times and pass in the erode element, and then I call the dilate function a couple of times uh, and pass in the dilate element. After switching that Boolean flag to true and rebuilding your project, you can uh, try and 
filter out the object again, you'll see that uh, it's much more clear with less noise. Now that we have a nice, clean, filtered binary image, we're ready to move on to the final step. And we're going to use OpenCV's Find Contours function, and what we're going to input into it is our uh, clean, filtered binary image that we've just made. And it will output a vector of contours, which is uh, the outline of each uh, white space that's found in the binary image. We're going to use the moments method, and uh, we're going to input in the vector of contours that we just got from the Find Contours function. It's then going to output the xy coordinates of the largest contour uh, defined by its inner area, so the, the area that the contours encompass. So here are the contours being drawn to the frame on the right, and if you could imagine them all filled in, like here, uh, that's the area that we're looking for. So after all this, we should have our tracked object on the screen, so let's go have a look at uh, how we're actually going to do this here. So head back to the top of our main function, we'll find a boolean called track objects. We're going to set it to true. Then scroll down and see where this is used. We can find it here. If this is true, then we'll call track filtered object, which I've uh, made a little function for it up, up top here. Right here. Now, like I've said before, we uh, make a vector of contours, which is a vector of vector of points. We then call the find contours function and uh, pass in our filtered image. And then we're going to call the moments method and we're going to pass in the contours. So don't worry about completely understanding all this stuff. Um, this tutorial isn't really about uh, the coding aspect of it. It's more about the method behind uh, fast object tracking in uh, image processing. Alright, so go ahead and try it yourself. Make sure the track objects boolean variable is set. I've uh, provided a little example here of. Uh, decide to track a golf ball. You can see it's not 100% uh, accurate, but it definitely does the trick. And uh, like I said, this is just a very quick and dirty way of, uh, of tracking objects. If you want to get more consistent results, you got to have nice lighting in the room and also a nice still background. So just as some motivation, I've, uh, I've attached this video. This is, uh, I use basically the exact same method to uh, track the motion of a kite and uh, get its velocity, its position, its heading, everything uh, for my senior electrical engineering project where we're uh, generating electricity from an airborne kite. Well, congratulations if you've made it this far. I hope uh, this tutorial helped you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll uh, try my best to get back to them. And other than that, thanks for watching.